Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grinding This Game, back with Oxygen Not Included. And this is going to be the final episode for this uh, base, I think. I've done pretty much everything I wanted to do with the base. I'm going to probably do a bit of a tour here. And the new update, the quality of life update, comes out officially in about a week and uh, about a week and a day. So I'll probably start a new base using that update. Now I am using the preview of the update for this episode. So you'll see some of the new stuff in here, but the lag is pretty bad. Now, I'm not sure if that's due to the preview build. I do have all the debugging stuff turned off, so it is still a bit choppy, a little bit slow. But I think I'll just kind of zoom in and do a tour of the base. I finally finished my tower. I didn't quite get 30 floors. I got 25 floors. Um, this is screenshot mode right now. Alt-S gets you into screenshot mode, but let's just zoom in. <laughs> So I got a lot of the new art going on. I switched out some of the art that I had in my little apartment buildings here. We've got uh, we've got the old food painting. We've got this one. Uh, these are all like famous artists, kind of reenacted, except for maybe this this one, this bottle. I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to build a little bit of an art gallery here. It's coming along, but. Uh, it's not quite finished yet. So what did I do off camera? Uh, I replaced a lot of the art, like I said. Uh, there's some new sculptures in here as well. These little tiny sculptures. They're like too high. New paintings. Uh, I put in another hatch farm. I'm trying to get sage hatches. So I'm feeding them uh, some dirt now. I put in the elevator. So you can see them using it here. They start here. Let's see if we can see someone use it. Here we go. Up oh, they go. Where are they going? Let's find out. Maybe to sleep for the night? Oh. Oh, they're going out here. Okay. There's one entrance to the right, and that's right through here. What are they grabbing? Clay. Oh yeah, I've got a I've got a big storage room down at the bottom that they're putting all this stuff in. I've been building uh, these ro robo miners once in a while just to kind of mine out the area. So I put one here. There was one up here, I think, before. Oh, and there's this one that cleared out this whole zone or whole area. That would probably would have been fast, just as fast to get the dupes to do it. But uh, I thought I'd just use the technology we had instead. We have a lot of idle dupes. And a lot of dupes have mastered every single job. So if we go into like Potato here, his little crown means he's mastered the job and he's done pretty much everything except Space Cadet. And uh, some artistry stuff, but we only need a few artists, so that's a bit overkill. There are still some dupes that are training. These were kind of like the last 10 dupes. What else, was that? What else have I done? I I can't remember if the sleep weed farm is, was completed last episode, but it's here and here now. Lots of weed warts. These came from the ice planet. I did, uh, I think, about six or seven missions to this planet to get weed warts. I think we got three per chip. Uh, this water I've been having to add to it for the sleep weed farm, and I'm getting it currently. Well, I was getting it from down here. As you can see, it just uh, ran out. So I'll probably do a dig, something like along here. You can see I was kind of preparing it because I put these in and just let this drain in. And then this pipe is going over to here and then that's dumping in here. They're also dumping water in here from this thing. So the water comes out at 40 degrees. This used to be quite cold in here, but it's kind of warmed up over time. And then it gets cooled somewhat, and then it comes along here at around 25 degrees into the cold room. And it gets cooled down by all these weasel warts. Now, the weasel warts aren't even actually being used now because the temperature is uh, minus one. So if it hits, if it goes below zero, I open all these doors here using some automation through a knot gate. And that kind of disables the weasel warts from working. We got some auto sweepers in here. I think they're delivering fertilizer. Yeah, there's some fertilizer. 
Or is it dirt? No, it's dirt. So we're sticking dirt in these containers here. Auto sweeper picks them up and sends them through a conveyor line into the room. And then that gets applied kind of automatically. They're also applying fertilizer. So that's the sleep wheat room. Now eventually I'll have to get the water from somewhere else. Maybe my water main water supply, which is down here. I've got a few main water supplies. There's most of the water's coming from this polluted water vent. Eleven kilograms per second, which is a ton of water. And we're compressing it into this room here. So we've got ninety thousand in some tiles, sixty thousand. There's a lot of water in here. Maybe I'll crack it open at the end just for fun to see what happens. We have a couple of copper volcanoes, uh, two of them, or one of them's blocked off. This one I never bothered to open up. We've got a lot of food in here I should probably get, but look at this. We've got 3.6 million food, and it's made up of a million pepper bread, a couple million fried mushrooms, and I don't have a big mushroom farm. It's actually quite small. It's right, right here, and we have a lot of slime. 12 tons of slime built up, so food is going to continue to grow until we use up that slime. And then it should start to trend down. Storing all the food here and here, and then pinch of pepper nuts I'm, I'm storing right down here. This is my giant polluted water tank. This is used to uh, cool the aqua tuners. So these aqua tuners here, they're, they run, they cool petroleum by 14 degrees, 14 degrees for each aqua tuner. It comes up here, uh, it buffers in this tank, and then it's, it's cool as my power plant. So you can see it's nice and cool in here. It was cooler, but... Uh, we got a lot of solar power up, up top, so we don't really use natural gas much. You can see it's built up in this room, and it's built up... Uh, where's my geyser? Oh, in here it's not fully saturated, but... The other aqua tuner was for bristle blossoms to bring sieved water down from 40 degrees down 14 degrees to 26 but I stopped I took apart my berry farm it used to be around here and if I continued on with this base I would probably put the berry farm back at some point all right we got our oil plastic fertilizer room here we're turning oil into petroleum buffering it in these tanks and I was using this petroleum for uh, the petroleum rocket and as well I'm using it uh, for this petroleum generator but it doesn't run very often because there's so much power what else do we have here uh, we've got plastic being made still out of that petroleum so this line splits here petroleum goes in here I'm probably gonna have to mop some water at some point in here this is set to only work if it's below 60 degrees, but it's been pretty cool in here. There's also a cooling loop. There's a polluted water cooling loop that comes through here. Water comes in at 35 and leaves at about 45. And then we destroy the heat in a sieve somewhere over here, up this way, right here. Wherever we, wherever we have sieves, I've got a compost and a sweep arm to automatically put it in the composter, but it needs to be turned over by the by the dupes. Got my little CO2 automation here. If it detects CO2 and the pressure is over a thousand, then it just sends it down to the slicksters down at the very bottom. I'll show you that. There's also fertilizer makers. Polluted water is going in. Actually, the cooling loop uses some of this polluted water. We're conveying down, uh, or conveying up fertilizer, and we're conveying down phosphorite. Phosphorite's coming from up here in our little Dreco farm, which is just a chlorine room that's kept nice and warm. And we put some Dreco's in there, and they eat the bomb lily. There's a lot of bomb lily on the floor here. There's like 26 per tile. There's also a thousand of them over here somewhere. I was putting them in a container. Right here. There's 1700 bomb lily flowers on the ground. Should probably store those again. Now we're gonna go 
it's going to auto save at the end of the cycle here and it's going to it takes a while to auto save so uh, this is our gold setup gold volcano kind of falls on the ground heats up the steam goes into the steam turbine uh, cooler steam comes at the top and then with a thermium pipe uh, pump we send the cooled, cooled steam back down into this room in, in kind of a loop So I'll just show you that loop here. So here it just comes back down, squirts in this room. The other pumps, I don't, that was more to get things set up. And then whenever we want to get gold out of here, it's really hot, but then we send it on a con conveyor line down this way. And I'm storing it underwater to cool it. So it's like minus four. This one was put in more recently. So that's kind of the gold setup. Uh, we're using chlorine for something, I think. I can't, oh, the Dreco room. That was just to fill the Dreco room. Up here, we've got some uh, room with Weezworts in hydrogen to cool this this uh, cool steam vent, which comes out at 110. That'll just get the water to condense. Then the water's actually going over this way to this one electrolyzer which is making hydrogen and oxygen for our super cooled hydrogen and oxygen setup. This this kind of build came from a, a design by LifeGrow, who's like a Twitch streamer and YouTuber. Really nice, elegant design. It uses super coolant in a loop. So there's two setups here, kind of identical, but with just different settings. So before the super coolant goes in the aqua tuner, it checks if it's uh, warm enough to go in the aqua tuner. And if it's not warm enough, it just goes in a loop. Uh, and if it's a good temperature to safely go through the aqua tuner without turning into a solid, then it lets it in and cools it down. And then we're sending hydrogen in, we're sending oxygen in. We got way too much liquid oxygen now. Uh, this is kind of a neat little thing I put together. So we got a ton of regolith. Uh, if you look under filtration medium, we've got I had 1,100 tons of it. It's coming down slowly. So we're getting dupes to put regolith in these two containers. It's auto sweeped into this conveyor loader. It gets conveyed down and then it gets stuck in this feeder. And these guys eat 4,800 kilograms or 4.8 tons per day. And then they barf up half of the consumed mass. So this is slowly destroying regolith, which is kind of what I wanted. Now this area gets pretty hot because the regolith is coming from space at like 200 degrees, but got some weasel warts to cool it down, and it's getting destroyed pretty quickly. The thing that I was missing before was a, a robo miner because when they puke it up, it turns into a tile, and this was all getting gummed up. So if you get a robo miner in there as well, then it works out pretty nicely. A metal tile they can't get through, so once I sealed this up, they were trapped forever. There was only one to begin with, but they kind of, they've been multiplying. They're pretty cute, actually. Not when they barf up the regolith, but... <laughs> what else do we have here? I added more tubes. Like I said, I got the elevator in here. And there's a stop at every floor. So they can get in here and then they can go to their apartments at night. We got a lot of decor. Check out this decor. Uh, let me zoom out here. Decor. Green is good. <laughs> Red is bad. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And if you look at the vitals, you can see the morale is like... Most of them are over 40. I had one that was over 50 at one point, but not at the moment. 46. They got three shift break, bedroom, great hall, gorgeous get decor, superb meal, washroom, danced, and showering. Sometimes they get espresso as well. Down here, got the arcade, got the robo, ju juke bot, sorry, and the espresso machine. We got our kind of mass storage here. And what else? I've got this steam vent cap because it's pathetic output of 92 grams a second. 
and I don't need any more water. There's a second steam geyser over here. This one's a bit better, 6.4k per second. This this map has a crazy amount of, of water. Here's the seed, 666, if you're interested. <laughs> uh, this sour gas, I basically contained it. There were some tears in the abyssalite that caused all this stuff to heat up that I had to insulate. I think it was coming from right here. And some of it I had to filter and store in these tanks. We've got our slickster farm down here and they're all starving because I don't have enough CO2 for them. And I've got all sorts of liquids down here. I'm filtering out oil and sending it up. And there's another water geyser here that puts out 7.4k. Oh crap. I just realized this is like completely full now. <laughs> we're not we're not able to use the water fast enough. That's pretty hot water too, 195 degrees. That's being made into oxygen here. So here's the power, water, piping. Pretty standard setup that I use. Two electrolyzers, four pumps, uh, nullifier, and then we filter. I'm using two gas filters. Burning off the extra hydrogen here. Any extra power we need, we use coal. I could tie this into the main grid, but I haven't bothered. We have a lot of coal. We have 265 tons of coal. We still got lots of uh, wild sleet weed as well, and I have have that set to auto harvest. So whenever it grows, they go in there and grab that. What else do we got going on in here? Uh, my, ma my main power grid briefly showed you. It's the cooling loop. I've got coal as the secondary power. So primary power is on this battery set to 157. Secondary power is coal, 23 to four. And then petroleum is oh, somewhere in the middle. I guess petroleum gets used first. Here's the automation. Natural gas all goes into this battery for decision making. We've got a few extra smart batteries here just for buffering, but not really necessary. I had a carbon skimmer going, but instead of using that, now what I do is I detect carbon dioxide down here. And if there's enough pressure and carbon dioxide, I send it down into the Slickster room. A glossy Draco in there. Hmm. We've got huge, huge caches of food because we're 1,500 cycles in, and so we could go in there and break in there and grab that food, but not really necessary. My other oxygen setup is right here, and we've got four electrolyzers, eight pumps, two saturated lines of oxygen going to the base. And some of that hydrogen goes up this way. Now, what was I doing with it here? Oh, that was for the Weezwort area. But the rest of it goes up this way and goes off through a pump to our liquid oxygen setup up over here. Here it comes down here and into here. We do have a rocket that's probably ready to go here. Just gotta select our destination. I think we're all fueled up, actually. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. But I'm not gonna launch the rocket. There's no point. This is just kind of a review. Summarizing the base. We've been to... We've been to a lot of these planets, even though they don't show that we've been there. I've been to Terrestrial. I've been to the Gas Giant. Ice Giant. Volcanic, I didn't go to. And actually, when we go to the ice planet, we come back with methane, solid methane. Oh, I forgot to show that. So I redid my conveyor belt here for the rocket. First, I'll show the, the two loops here. We got a loop of oxygen that comes up here and it fills our oxidizer tank. And we got a liquid hydrogen for fuel. And I have some automation here just to turn it on. Let's actually turn it on. We can see it flowing. 
So now the liquid hydrogen comes out, comes along here, goes in the rocket and fills up the three tanks, and then once they're full, it starts looping. And then once the tanks are full, I go in there, I turn that back off. I'm going to speed things up here, just so you can see it. Maybe I will launch it. We'll send it off, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get it back in time. Do the same thing with oxygen. Oh, I already did. Takes a while to save now. That's one of the things they didn't fix in this quality of life update was the size of the save file. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger every cycle. So there we go, we're filling this tank first. Then this one, then this one. Once it starts to loop, that's when I turn it off. So let's see what's this one at here. We're going up to 1700. So there's a conveyor belt here for the solid cargo that comes along here, goes down this way. Down here, and this is kind of my, like my universal storage for all rocket related stuff. And I put a liquid lock with oil. It's really cold in here, as you can notice. And that's because, look at this. Oh, it didn't even show up. But we were, I had uh, solid methane in here at minus 200, it comes in at. Now it heated up and turned into, into uh, natural gas. So eventually we'll have to use this, uh, even though I'm like completely saturated with power. But let's just check our fuel. So the fuel is almost ready. Oh, we're waiting for 2700. Okay. Before I was getting all blocked up with this offloading of storage. But now it should be better because it comes down here. And I'm allowing everything in these containers. I'll just copy those settings to these as well. I don't, I don't think these last two are reachable because they're kind of hidden, but I could have some more on the left and top here. They used to be able to see through mesh tiles, I think, but I think they changed the logic. Now, actually, I just realized my <laughs> my crude oil might actually freeze solid. It freezes at minus 40. That would be really bad, because then our, our lock is going to get destroyed. So I should probably get this natural gas out of here and use it for some kind of useful cooling purpose. i probably just build a gas pump and cool off any hot spots like right here. And, and then just dump it back in the room. So is our rocket ready here? Yeah, the, both are looping now, so we'll go turn off the loops. This automation here. And then the pipes will get drained. And I think it's safe to send the send the thing now. Uh, everyone, everything's ready. Just gotta select our destination. I'll probably just go to the ice planet again. Get some solid methane. Or we could go all the way out to maybe go to the ice giant. We get more. What do we get here? Nineteen percent solid methane. We get some solid oxygen. Let's go there. Oh, it shows us. Okay, never mind. Let's launch that. There we go. And I like to build my rockets in the vacuum of space. That way, all this heat gets just destroyed right away. So, that rocket will take. 33 cycles, so we're not going to get through that in this video, but the uh, the solid methane comes back, goes in this container, warms up over time, and turns into natural gas. Can show the piping for in here. It's not complete yet. I haven't hooked up all the bathrooms. Oh, we got mixed. Oh, that's okay. Mixed water coming out of here.
So yeah, pretty laggy at this point, and that's why I'm gonna restart. I, I'm not sure if I'll... I've got a bunch of dude fix my base videos I want to do before the update comes out, so I'll probably just do those. And then when the when this update quality of life comes out for like for real in about a week, that's probably when I'll start the new base. But I just wanted to wrap this this one up nice and cleanly. I think that's pretty much it in terms of stuff. Explain that. Kind of explain this. Pretty pleased with this base. We've got basically infinite food. We've got our rocket on like a continuing mission. <laughs> we could build a couple more rocket, rocket silos because we have enough liquid hydrogen and oxygen, but I didn't really bother. I didn't really show my solar setup here. So I think there's more optimal ways to do this, but I just do two bunker tiles, two bunker doors. And even though I don't repeat it right here, I kind of repeat it all the way across here. And these rubble miners, they originally were steel, but they warmed up slowly over time. And now they're made out of thermium, which you make in this thing over here, uh, right here. Thermium is made out of tungsten and niobium, and you get niobium from the planets. We'll get some from this ice giant. Let's just see here. We get trace amounts of niobium. Oh, actually 2%. So, meteorites hit, uh, the stuff builds up on these doors. When the meteor shower is over, they open and fall on the glass, which is made out of diamond. The rubble miners clean them up, and then the sunlight's able to get through again. Once the, once the shower's over, which we detect with this dish here, which doesn't actually have a view of the sky, but it still works. Here's the automation, it's really simple. It goes through a knot gate and it's connected to all the doors. Pretty simple. Now the scan quality is different when all the doors are open, as you'll see once the storm is over. And I've got them repeated quite a few times here. Oh, I think it's over. Here they go. They're going to open up. You can see this thing in action. So all this will all fall down. We'll get a bit of a power spike here. <laughs> That'll all get cleaned up. What's this space scanner at? Temperature wise. Oh, they don't melt until 2500. So the quality, scan quality now is 23%. I could put more of these away from, far away from machines, but it's been good enough for me. And then we've got the solar power here. There's no light shining through yet, but once the, once the sun is on, this produces a lot of power. And I could actually duplicate it on the other side over here, but I didn't bother. I kind of want to build a nice symmetrical base next time. Uh, this one's a bit of a mess, as you can see. Things are just kind of all over the place. But it's functional. It works. The map's pretty much filled with oxygen as well. Base is a bit cool at the top because this all used to be ice biome. And it's a little bit warm here, but not too warm. 27. Oh, we got new music here. Very spacey. So I think that's everything I'm going to show here. I, I went into detail in a lot of these systems in previous episodes, so check out the playlist if you want to see specific builds like uh, this in detail. That was about five episodes ago, I think. Just show the plumbing, gas, power. And the settings. Current pressure. Uh, this this is kind of not necessary, but
So a bit of a shorter episode this time. And I'm looking forward to starting a new base just because it's fun to start from scratch. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.